Uh, tonight we have a very, very interesting lecture. It's uh, entitled Live Design, Case Studies of Parametric Practice. And if any of you get to look at Land's website, it's very interesting stuff that they're doing. We like to define ourselves parametric by nature. Because, as you'll see during the course of this lecture, we always try to recombine our inner and external resources to better fit the goal of each particular design challenge. Land is composed of six members. Uh, we are spread all around the globe, uh, from Boulder, where Monica Wittig is. Shane Salisbury is in Bozeman. Uh, Carlo and myself are in, in Brooklyn. Uh, while Aaron Willett is a fabrication shop manager in Boston. And then our friend Luis Ferguada is Barcelona at the Institute of, Catalo or Institute of Advanced Architecture at Catalonia. So, the first pro project we're going to show tonight is a project that we are particularly attached to because it was when uh, LAN started. It's a, it's a design uh, of a pavilion for a building fair in Barcelona. And this project started a few years ago and was a collaborative project between six uh, postgrad students under the direction of Marta Malet at the Institute of Advanced Architecture of Catalonia, which was where the, the whole kind of land started. Well, the issue with parametrics and associative design, uh, it gives us you know, thousands of similar options where we start to define sim simple rules, and from there we start to you know, kind of force out um, a solution by adding more data, whether it's fabrication or whether it's uh, you know, construction restraints and budgetary uh, concerns. Uh, the problem being is that it's as likely to give you a thousand wrong solutions as a thousand right. Uh, so how do we decide to distinguish successes versus our failures? Uh, well, the way we do this is by actively progressing with different simulation and um, performance type studies. Uh, a final form was decided upon uh, as being the most successful at mitigating troublesome drifts, and the third unit of the study began the fabrication. Uh, we started with laser cut models and starting to understand how these pieces were going to come together and what materiality would work in that sort of environment. Uh, we see here on the top our, an elevation of our final model. Uh, on the right-hand side, we see the breakdown of the components and how they would start to work together. The center, we've got a breakdown and uh, an assembled model, uh, a laser cut model. And finally, the students uh, were engaged in the actual manufacturing. Um, and this becomes a, a point of contention on whether architects should be engaged in the manufacturing. Um, for students, we think it's of incredible importance to understand that when you implicate certain things in your designs, that you're going to need to be manufactured at some point. So understanding those implications is, is very important. Uh, not necessarily, I mean, if we were going to be manufacturing a thousand wind fences, obviously architects you know, would have to step aside there. But for this, for this pr uh, project, it was, it was really great to see them uh, become in, in tune with the machines. The only machine that we could use was this little guy, which, you know, it's, it's a really interesting uh, CNC machine. It's, a, it's pretty much a robotic arm, has uh, more kind of restrained um, movements than, than the, the, the giant that I showed you before. But obviously, you know, it kind of changed everything. So this is where kind of fle flexibility kind of comes, comes into place, because we had almost kind of overnight to rethink the structure of the workshop and especially the, the how to you know, how to teach the students and how what to design at the end you know whenever we do workshop we try to, to have fun we have to do we try to have fun in general but you know the workshop it's special oh for for the one who knows of you that don't know what Pecha Kucha is. Pecha Kucha is it's a format that was uh, started uh, in, uh, in Tokyo in 2003, I guess, by uh, Office uh, of uh, Clay and Ditam Architecture. And it's pretty much, it's a, it's a format of lecture that pretty much goes against what we're doing here right now. I mean, their first assumption is that uh, architects speak too much, that uh, it's so, so boring to, to stay for 45 minutes listening to you know two architects, and so these are just kind of few few pictures of uh, of the installation and the performance. And this was uh, uh, performed during the Movement Research Festival, which is a dance festival that happens kind of every year in New York, and it's just a dancing performance kind of all around the city. So the, the last study we're going to talk about speaks about the exploration into complexity, uh, taking a difficult conceptual idea and breaking it down into component parts in which we can generate a parametric model with. Uh, this project was done uh, 
in the last month, collaborating with architect John Beckman and his firm Access Mundi to parametrically create a prototype for a new tower typology. Uh, the project is re awaiting release um, at the end of June, so we're kind of giving a little preview here. Uh, some details are, uh, are still top secret, but we're going to show you a bit about our parametric process as far as how we created this tower. So what we needed to do was we needed to rationalize, and we need to put each of the units in relationship to another, uh, other units around them, um, while still trying to mimic that complexity. Uh, what we did here is we created what we call the smart block. We created a three-story module in which the units could be parametrically arranged, and then that block was then propagated up the tower with a rotation of 90, 180, or 270. So each facade was started to switch and change and, and provide a sort of a randomness uh, you know, aesthetic, while still remaining very buildable uh, with central cores, with you know parametric setbacks and floor plates that aren't necessarily articulated on the articulated on the facade, but are uh, obviously within the building it, as a necessity. That leaves us with this image. Uh, all of our networks connected. What what can this lead to, and how can live design and adding more input, uh, data input from different entities, and better representing each person start to promote better architecture and better collaborations um, between fields and interdisciplinary collaboration. So with that, uh, thank you for having us. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we will take any questions.